Welcome to worship. We're so glad you're here worshiping with us today. Uh, we invite you, if you're willing and able, to stand as we sing our opening songs. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. created thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are created thou art worthy O Lord thou art worthy thou art worthy thou art worthy O Lord to receive created thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are created thou art worthy O Lord join me in the call to worship rejoice people of God celebrate the life within you and Christ's presence in your midst our eyes shall be open, the present will have new meaning, and the future will be bright with hope. Rejoice, people of God, bow your heads before the one who is our wisdom and strength. We place ourselves before this God, that we may be touched and cleaned by the power of God's Spirit. Amen.
you may be seated. And I invite you to join me in our opening prayer on the screen and printed in the bulletin. O oh God, that we may receive your blessing, touch our brows, touch our heads, and do not look upon us in anger. In a hard year, offer us mercy. In a year of affliction, offer us kindness. Dark spirits banish from us. Bright spirits bring close to us. Gray spirits put away from us. Good spirits draw near to us. When we are afraid, offer us courage. When we are ashamed, be our true face. Be over us like a blanket. Be under us like soft grass. Amen. I invite you to be at peace for a moment, for a moment of personal reflection. I invite you to hear this Old Testament lesson from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And in accordance with the scriptures, hear this good news. In the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uniting all of the world as one and with the awareness of God's presence with us, let us greet one another with the Spirit of God in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. You may pass the peace of Christ with one another.
of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am longer the same. He touched me, oh, He touched me, and all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise Him. Thou shalt eternity rolls. He touched me, oh, He touched me, and all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me Let us remain standing for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the sad synagogue named Jairus came out, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with them, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. Since she had endured much under the phys many physicians and had spent all that she had had, she was no better, but grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt her body that she was healed from her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some of the people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk. She was about 12 years of age. As this, at this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and he told them to give her something to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Our children are on holiday, so we're moving straight into the sermon. <laughs> Nancy, thank for you for the beautiful music today. We, uh, Susan's on vacation, and she'll be back next week. But thank you for the, the wonderful music that we can listen to. So maybe just think up something in the middle of the sermon. If it gets really bad, I might let you just play a little bit, another round, you know? Let's begin with a word of prayer. Oh, holy God. Remind us of your Spirit's presence. In the hot of summer and the weariness of our world, we come to you 
hearing, waiting to hear your message for us and for our lives and for our church. Help us to hear through your Spirit's work, your direction and your guidance in our lives and for our world. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Well, and this is a story from the other side. It's this back and forth across the Sea of Galilee again, you know, to the non-Jewish side, to the Gentile side, and back to the Jewish side. It goes back and forth. And what some commentators are really suggesting there is this is early on in Jesus' ministry in the book of Mark that it's important for us to know that Jesus not only came for the Jewish people, but for the rest of us. Early on in Mark, that's the important thing from one side and the other, kind of alternating, healing of demons, coming back and forth, back and crawl forth across troubled waters. But when he arrives on this side, on the Jewish side, there arrives, he arrives to a crowd. People who are beginning to learn more and more about Jesus and what he does and what he can do and what he's teaching, enough to get a crowd together. I'm sure everybody kind of snuck in close so they'd make sure that they could hear what was going on. You didn't want to miss anything, and there weren't any loudspeakers back then. And again, this mar Mark has this story, this interpolation uh, between uh, one story that's bookended and then another story in the middle of that. It's a technique that Mark uses oftentimes. Part of it it, 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 it drives and it builds this anticipation of what might happen. It kind of delays the situation sometimes. And at other times, like we see today, it might frustrate people that are all around, listening, seeing what's gonna, what he's going to do next. And Josh, the Jewish leader of the synagogue, comes and publicly, before the crowd and everybody else, publicly gets to his knees, kneels before Jesus, and says, please, 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 come heal my daughter who is sick. Can you imagine just this public humili humiliation that this bold leader at the synagogue was willing to go through for this, you know, country rabbi, this this teacher from, from Galilee, from Nazareth. But he comes there and he's willing to do whatever must be done that is his daughter might be healed. Just this, this public desperation that's within this leader. And Jesus goes with him through the crowd. Suddenly, he feels just this, this little slight touch, this, this power, he says, leave his body. A touch on his robe or his clothes, or as we debated in seminary, was it a tassel and fringe or was it the hem of his garment? And you're like, what's that matter? Well, if it was his tassel or his fringe of his rabbi's robe, then it would show that Jesus was certified and, and respected within the leaders of the synagogue as a teacher, as a true synagogue leader, as, as he get, was given more credentialing, more, more, more standing in the community, especially the Jewish community. But if it's just his hymn, then it's maybe not. He wasn't as accepted. And the way that can be translated from the Greek is sometimes, you know, it can go either way and you can make an argument that can take like, I don't know, I think it took us two weeks to talk about it in seminary. Uh, but, you know, that's just for you to think about a little bit. But either way, didn't matter to her. And Jesus turns suddenly and asks, who did it? Funny, one commentator pointed out, I, I, I took Greek, or Greek took me better, uh, but the commentator pointed out that the who of this, who touched me, is actually a feminine singular. So Jesus knew that it was a woman just from the get-go. It's interesting. Or at least that's the way Mark puts it in the text. But the woman in fear, although she had just been brave enough to touch his garment, his fringe, his hem, she was just brave enough to do that, but she was fearful to let him know who it was. She, but she admits boldly why she'd done it. And Jesus doesn't shun or shame her, but transforms her from this nameless woman that's in Scripture 
to connecting her to the family of God by referring to her as daughter. Jesus simply tells her that her faith has made her well and to go in peace. That's it. And to be healed, made well. The Greek term in there is sozo, S-O-Z-O. And it means to be saved. It's where we get the word salvation. Jesus comes to bring salvation, to bring healing. At this point, you can see that salvation is at work through Jesus and in Jesus' presence long ago. And she is active in her healing. I always think about that. That's, you know, she went to Jesus and that she touched him. She went seeking after him, looking for him. It's part of my great love with communion. I, I don't know if you've ever thought about the symbolism of communion in some denominations and traditions. They'll serve communion in the pews, and it even in this building has been done because there's little pew cups there. But the power of communion, when, when, the, when the elements are brought from the table into the chancel, into the nave, and people come toward it, to me, it symbolizes what's going on here. Jesus was there, Jesus was teaching, and the woman went toward Jesus. There's an active uh, participation in it. It's not just you, you pray about things and you just let them go. It's, it's you pray about it and you work for it. That you go, that you meet, that there's, a, there's an interconnection. Jesus finds us where we are, but we also have to seek after God in our lives and with our living. It's not just this either or or one of or Jesus is going to find me, that it's that we continue to work after it and that grace enables that in our life to take place. Uh, it's just some imagery for communion next time we do it, next week. But I can only imagine Jairus' frustration and his fury. Can you imagine that? He's this leader of the synagogue, this well-respected person in the community, and this nameless woman who has, is deemed unclean for the past 12 years of her life comes and slows down Jesus from getting to his daughter to make her well. Oh, I bet there was smoke rolling out of his ears, red face, nostrils spread, angry. Who is this woman to slow him down? He's used to not waiting very much, I would imagine, not to asking, but telling, having to ask for a favor already, publicly humiliated, begging for Jesus to come to his house to heal his daughter and to having now to wait for it. Messengers even came in the midst of that and said, don't worry about the teacher any longer. Your daughter has died. Don't trouble him anymore. And Jesus quickly replies that she's only sleeping and keeps making his way toward her. Now, when they get to the house, it's tradition in Jewish culture of the time that they would actually hire professional whalers to be at the house of mourning. Part of that was status. You know, the more people that showed up, the more important it was. And he gets there, and there's all this comm commotion with wailing and crying outside. And Jesus does say again that, that she's just sleeping. And he takes the mom and dad in there and those who've traveled with Jesus, the disciples who was closest to them. He goes in, takes her hand, tells her to get up, and she gets up and starts walking around. Jesus, which I think this is great, he sternly orders them to tell no one this messianic secret that's through Mark. Jesus is trying to figure out who these people are, or people are trying to figure out who Jesus is, and, and they're beginning to see it, but he's like, shh, don't tell. But in these stories, Jesus restores and offers life in miraculous ways. I don't know about you, but miracles do make me a little uncomfortable. Maybe you too. For me, I don't doubt that they happened in the Scriptures. I don't doubt it. But I do wonder why they don't happen more in the world that we live in, in today's world. I trust that God is still in the miracle business. And maybe that these stories today might be best served for our lives to see the trust 
that Jairus and the, the, the woman actually placed in, that they placed in Jesus versus the systems and practices of the culture. I mean, it says that she'd been to the doctor and she'd spent all she had and she still wasn't any better. Jairus, I'm sure, had, had, had the very best doctors of the time to try to make his daughter better. But they saw a need for Jesus to be present in their lives. The stuff of the world couldn't necessarily solve this situation. Jesus, they, they began to trust, put their full and whole trust in Jesus alone for their life. There's plenty around that pulls out our fears and our illnesses and ruins our harmony and peace and nearly all of life that we hold precious sometimes in the world from the news cycle to a political debate that we're uncertainty, that brings uncertainty to us, to society's inequality, to confrontations of our own limitations and finitude in our life. And yet to live our lives in the bold trust of Jairus and this woman, for in Christ is our salvation, for in Christ is our healing, that His love and His grace and His mercy take root in our lives, and it becomes our hope and our trust. It's Him who sustains and enables us. We are claimed through the waters of baptism, however long ago or soon we just received them. And there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from this great love of Christ. Nothing, never, ever. That is the bold truth of God's great love for us and for the world around us. May yours too be a living faith with bold claiming of Christ's presence for you. Our glory, honor, and power be to the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. We have the opportunity to come to be bold in our faith and to receive the anointing and healing that Christ offers to all people. And so we invite you to come to be anointed as we pray for healing for maybe yourself or maybe someone else or particularly the world. You're invited to come to be anointed and to heal, kneel at the altar as long as you wish. All are welcome.
Let us pray together. O good and gracious God, God who calls to us in the darkness and the uncertainty of life, God who calls to us when we are uncertain of which way to turn, God who welcomes us in open arms to receive us and forgive us, to empower us and strengthen us, we give you thanks, O God, for our place in your family. Help us always to acknowledge your presence in our lives. Help us to lean fully upon you for our direction and our guidance. May our lives and our ways model your ways, O God. Help us to chase after the goodness with the same vigor that you do. Transform our hearts into seeing and feeling and doing as you would see and feel and do. Good and gracious God, we do give you thanks for your presence in our lives and in our world. We do pray especially, O God, for peace to come. We We pray especially for the war in Ukraine to come to an end. We pray, O God, for Gaza and Israel to respect one another's borders and to cease fighting. We ask, O God, for peace to be throughout China, Taiwan, to bridge the gap on North and South Korea, North and South Vietnam. Help us, O God, to see your way and you work your way Help us to be reminded of the goodness that lies for all the world when we care with the same care that you care about others. We do pray for our country, O Lord. It was an unsettling week on the political scene for all of us. But we pray, O God, for harmony and peace to reign, for wise leaders to be selected, for goodness for the best of our country to be seen, and for our shortfallings to end. We pray, O God, for our city, especially this day we're reminded of those who are homeless and face the brutal uncertainty of the hot, my lack of food, wellness. We pray, O God, for your continued blessing upon them and for help us to be able to figure out ways in which to help others. Life often is hard. We're not always sure how to respond. But we know that you're there with us and for us. Strengthen us, O God, to do your work in the world around us, to be your people more faithfully. We pray for the church universal, for its work and ministry around the world that all may know of your love and your grace and your constant supply of love. Help us, especially this merged congregation coming together of so many people, we ask, O God, for your spirit to be among us, that we may do your work in your way. Help us to be reminded of the work and the good things of the work of the United Methodist Church in this place and around the world. Most heartily, O God, we lift up to you those who are most, we are most concerned about in our hearts and our minds. We pray for healing for those whom we love, care about, neighbors and friends. We give you thanks, O God, for modern medicine and for its capabilities. We pray, O God, for an ever-widening uh, ability for folks to receive that medical care. But, O God, we also pray for your miracles to be wrought, that others may know your healing touch in their lives, for your salvation comes to us in so many ways. Help us, O God, to feel your love in our lives, to remind us that we are forgiven for our wrongs, things that we get incorrect, that your grace continues to help us grow into who you wish us to be, 
and that your love and your grace never, ever, ever, ever fail us. Remind us, O oh God, of the many teachings of Christ. Especially this day, we give you thanks for the prayer in which has taught his disciples to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us today. My name is Robert. I'm the Director of Outreach and Worship Arts here at our church and community, and we're honored to have you. If it's your first time, there is a welcome card in the back of the pew. You can put those in the offering plates, or if you're a college student, there's a bright neon card, and we can get you connected. Uh, we are seeking some volunteers to help and uh, lead with worship, particularly for the month of July for our Love and Justice series. So if you're interested in reading scripture or announcements, uh, there's a sign up in the hallway. Uh, for the month of June, we're also looking, uh, supporting, we have been supporting the Spartan Open Pantry, um, and there's lots of food in the back uh, already, but they can always use more. Um, they've given out a lot of food this summer. And so drop off those items this week so that they can pick them up. Um, but for July, coming up tomorrow, we're inviting you to bring school supplies for Peck Elementary as they will prepare for school in August. Um, and so they need some supplies for school of all kinds. And you can drop those off near the church office as well for the month of July. Uh, this summer, we're having a Bible study of faith and film. It began last week just as an orientation. And this week, we're watching the movie Contact in the chapel at 6 p.m. So if you'd like to come for some popcorn, watching a movie, having some fun. And then the next week, we'll discuss the movie on that Tuesday at 6. Uh, beginning next Sunday, we'll begin our Love and Justice Sermon Series um, with Dr. Haley Gabriel. Uh, she is uh, becoming the Assistant Professor of Religion at Greensboro College this fall, um, and she has a great perspective on the Biblical, she's a Biblical scholar, and we are honored to have her be with our first uh, preacher for this Love and Justice Series. If you want to know more, there's a, a bulletin board on the hallway with all of our speakers and preachers, so invite your friends to come and be a part of that this summer. All of these are ways of being part of our community together, and we give thanks to God for the opportunity to be in ministry together. And we invite you, if you're willing and able, to give of your tithe and offering to support the ministries we have together. And so you're invited to give at the offering plates or on the QR code on your bulletin or on the donate button on our website. All of these are ways to support our ministry. Thank you for supporting our ministry together. And now, because we give thanks to God for all the gifts we have, we invite you to stand and give God praise and thanks as we sing our doxology. Let us remain standing and together let us affirm our faith using the statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
People of faith, may you go forth into the world to live your faith boldly. May you know Christ's presence with you always and forever. And may the Spirit continue to guide you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you.